Why can't we have TikTok back then? Yeah, <laughs> with all the like actual useful skincare hacks. I remember making the video and I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to post this. Maybe I'm doing something yeah. wrong. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. It's time to get loud. Welcome back to Loud Talk with Lavi, a podcast where we break down the walls of beauty standards one flaw at a time. And today I'm joined by Victoria Santiago. Victoria, thank you so much for coming on to Loud Talk. It's such a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited about this. Awesome. So honestly, like just to jump right into it, um, I first saw you on social media obviously I've seen you like on my for you page and Instagram and stuff but um my, the first time I ever saw one of your pieces of content was actually on a Maybelline um ad I think it was like a born this way um ad which was so cool because I was actually working on one and I was watching your content and then that kind of led me down the rabbit hole of <laughs> seeing a bunch of your other content and I was like she seems dope I definitely have to connect with her and maybe have her on the podcast so um definitely appreciate your time here but kind of jumping right into that um tell me a bit about you tell the audience a bit about you and what what you do on social media um so I'm Victoria of course um <laughs> I guess you could say that I'm a beauty content creator um I never really intended to be like a content creator or influencer I feel like okay. I just fell into it yeah. asking like you know what do I do on social media I'm just like I don't know how to answer that because mm -hmm. I didn't purposely try to jump into it, it kind of just happened um right. but yeah I just do content around um just skin positivity sharing information about vitiligo poliosis and um just beauty positivity in general and of course a little bit of makeup here and there no I I absolutely love that and you're your content definitely radiates that positivity and just it's honestly like when I see content like yours online it is such a like that breath of fresh air um and you mentioned that you know you never intended to be a content creator so when did you kind of start posting on social media and if the intent wasn't to be a content creator what was kind of the intent there so I've always you know I've always been on Instagram since okay. I think the beginning of Instagram I was um, I'm 32 and I think I started back in like 2012. Okay. You know, you, know, you put the little fun filters on there. You mm -hmm. just you're here and there. Um, but I think I dove <clears throat> deep into it. What got me started was TikTok. Yes. I actually joined TikTok to keep an eye on my niece because she was entering that little teen phase. And I was like, you know, what? I'm going to just join it. Keep an eye on her. Make sure she's not doing anything or getting anything she's not supposed to be getting to. And then I would just post like, you know, random videos every so often, mm -hmm. um, like funny, just dumb videos. Um, and then one day I went to go get my eyelashes done for the first time, like lash extensions. And my lash chick was able to do white eyelashes. Okay. And I decided to make a video about it um, because I had a lot of anxiety um, that day about just being out in public. So I was like, you know, I just need to like, I'm going to share my feelings because I'm mm -hmm. very excited. But I'm also very like nervous about this. Mm -hmm. And um, those videos kind of just took off. And right. uh, that's kind of when I started, I guess, dabbling, <clears throat> sorry, into like the beauty content. But yeah. And now I'm here. <laughs> And do you do content full time now? I do not. I still work. Um, I work from home. I work about 25 hours a week. Okay. Um, my work is very flexible, like long as I get the job done. So I'm like in between. I am on the fence about, maybe I shouldn't say this. I don't know. <laughs> I am on the fence of quitting and trying to pursue this full time, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like... God's calling is leading me towards it, but right. I'm still going to work and map everything out because it is, I think the hard part of it is like, it's always, it's not like for sure. Right. You know? No, it's, it's so, you know, one month's here, one month's here, you never know. And then I feel like there's a week where like the algorithm's kind of funny and your views are down. And you're like, is my career over? <laughs> you know, it's very, it's a very stressful 
and I, I work full time outside of content creating also. So I totally get that. And I'll be strapped into this for a couple more years because I uh, still have a couple more years of school till I graduate. Um, but until then, you know, like I, I do see a lot of people now kind of making that decision, taking that leap of faith. And it's stressful, I think, and to kind of, you know, just yeah. put all all of it into content but it is exciting at the same time so I mean I wish you all the best with that and you know whatever is meant to be for you and um however things are supposed to work out I'm sure they will I feel like even just like managing work and just content creating I feel like is a lot like I was gonna ask you like I, you go to school you work full-time and then you do your podcast your social media I feel like that's a lot that's a lot it, that's it's a lot, lot. and It is. Yeah, it definitely is a lot. And for this past year, I've been working just like a traditional nine to five job. And um, it is interesting because I feel like, you know, once the clock hits five, I like turn my engineering brain off and I like turn my content creating brain on. And this is kind of like how I spend my free time. And, you know, the only way I'm able to actually do all of this is because I truly love content creating. And otherwise, this wouldn't be something I'd be hustling to do. But um since I love it, I have to kind of like, this is the only way I can do it right now until I kind of finish school. So just gotta, just gotta make it happen. But um, I want to go back to that viral video you said, like those few viral, viral videos they said really took off on TikTok. So um, you said you found a lash tech that could do white lashes, right? So what was kind of the decision to, was this, this was that the first like occurrence of you like looking to do like white lashes? uh yes so I've always wanted to try lash extensions period but I was worried because I didn't know back then like you know you just had the standard colors like yeah black I guess Mm -hmm. or dark whatever so I was like I don't know if I should just get both sides you know the same color black because I have a mix of black and white lashes Mm -hmm. And then my, just so happened to be around that time that I was looking, my friend started doing lashes and I was like, well, can you do white lashes? She was like, yeah, of course. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to try it and just, they're white already. Like, why not make them longer? Yeah. It's just where it goes. And yeah, Um, I guess I'm glad that I did do it because I thought that would lead me to where I am today. No, and I think that's exactly probably why, you know, those videos picked up and why you do have an audience and rightfully so, because you are not afraid. I mean, from what I see on social media, you're not afraid to kind of show your true self and um, even the way you do your makeup and stuff, it's not in a way. And I I talk about this all the time, like doing your makeup in a way to accentuate your features rather than cover your flaws. Right. And I think so many people just go right for trying to hide what they you know what is different about them or what they might be like a little scared about and um I think that definitely made you stand out and probably why your uh, videos gained traction because you kind of weren't afraid of going out of the ordinary box of like typical black or brown lashes as you said and walk me through like you know maybe when you were younger and started getting on social media as you mentioned you were on Instagram kind of from the beginning of it like was there a time where you felt um insecure for like let's say looking different than others and did you want to kind of use makeup in a way to kind of cover your differences so I did not develop vitiligo until I was 25 okay so I didn't grow up with it but I was I think I was very insecure about Mm -hmm. how I was growing up I was constantly like just by everyone around me being compared to somebody right. else that has always made me feel insecure. So I was always worried about like how I looked and just, just the very little things. Yeah. And I feel like every little girl probably goes through that, especially back then, you know, I grew up on the era of America's next top model. Mm-hmm. Like I watched like all the seasons and I think I got more insecure once I got into my adulthood that's when I started like developing acne and um you know you, you got the phones with the camera on it people were taking pictures and I think I just started becoming more insecure about myself mm-hmm. um I would say about right before I developed vitiligo was when I started feeling more confident in myself and like okay. I was 
I would wear a lot of makeup, even before vitiligo, just to hide like my acne and just, I didn't like my freckles, just stuff like that. So I wore makeup all the time. Like I remember working in the corporate office and I would sit in the parking lot and hurry and do my makeup to make sure I don't go in office with no makeup on. Um, but right before I developed vitiligo is when I started feeling confident about myself and then vitiligo. And I was just like, I shut down for me. I was just yeah. like, oh, this is not a win. And then I did go through a couple of years of hiding my vitiligo with makeup and stuff too. Right. But, yeah. And, you know, you mentioned a few things that, that I want to touch on. First of all, like you mentioned how you were used to be like insecure about like your freckles or you wanted to use makeup to to draw them on or to cover them up. But what I was going to get to that is I remember when I was much younger, I would always ask my mom, when are my freckles going to go away? You know, like when are they just going to disappear? And it's so funny because like now we see so many even makeup products out there that are specifically made to draw on freckles, you know, so I find it so interesting how sometimes these things that we can be insecure about other people are like dying to have. Um, and Very it's interesting how everything has flipped from back when like I was in high school. Like I, I had a few other friends who were insecure about their freckles too. Yes. And now it's, no, we had to have freckles. Yeah. You like people add them on to every makeup look. It's just like, you know, even filters nowadays, you see filters on TikTok that it's like a freckle filter. Like people love to see that. So that was one thing I found interesting, first of all, from what you mentioned. And um, second of all, you did mention that you, when you start, first started developing the Lego, you did use makeup to kind of cover that up. Um, how long did that last? And what was, walk me through like, kind of the day or the moment where you're like I'm done covering it up and I'm ready to kind of show you know my like new my new look in a way oh I love sharing this story because it will forever live in my head um I think I covered it up for about a year and a half maybe close to two years um so I remember I was in Walmart and I saw this girl she maybe was like 12 years old Okay. And I noticed she had a little leg on her forehead and then she had a, like a white streak of hair just going down. And I was like, man, here I am with my ball cap, makeup on, like hiding. And she's just out here just not hiding at all. Right. And that's kind of the moment that clicked for me that I maybe I shouldn't hide it. Mm-hmm. So like I slowly started easing into like not wearing um, baseball caps or like um makeup like brow makeup mascara um I think the phase was not wearing makeup but still wearing hats and then eventually it just got rid of both of them right just slowly getting more comfortable yeah and I think the last of it was not covering up my lashes Mm -hmm. because you know sometimes I feel naked like not having it I guess matching or whatever because mm-hmm. or sometimes it looks like I have no brow or yeah. so um I think my lashes were the hardest part okay uh, to I guess let go of so I did hold on to mascara a little longer um but eventually I just learned to just I guess drop it and just mm-hmm. get over fear and anxiety I think the hardest part was being out in public and okay. just the stairs Cause right. I got a lot of, but I learned to not focus so much on people staring and right. me thinking, oh, they're probably thinking something negative about me because I would have a lot of people comment, like come up to me in public and ask questions or comment about it. And it was never really negative. So mm-hmm. I was like, maybe it's me in my head, right? Like, my mindset and get out of thinking everyone's thinking something negative about me mm-hmm. it has helped a lot a lot oh absolutely and I think that mindset of like you think the whole world's like thinking about you and you know obviously when you have like a distinctive feature that's like part of your appearance like obviously people are gonna notice you know that's how I felt like with acne um struggling with acne like I couldn't sit here and be like oh you know don't worry about what other people do because no one's gonna look at your face like obviously people are gonna look people are gonna notice you have something that maybe looks different than the normal but I think realizing the intent behind like a stare and a lot of people, you know, they just look because it's something they haven't seen before, but there's no like, you know, not in every case, sometimes, you know, there's ill intent with it, but for the most part, I don't think there's like 
ill intent and um I'm sure they forget about it in the next like five seconds of their life so but for us like it can be like oh that the way that we're thinking about it the rest of the day I think that other people are also giving us that same attention and energy so it's definitely it's definitely stressful and I I I can imagine how how you felt there just kind of thinking of my own experience with acne I I think what made it hard is I have had negative comments to my face Mm. from most people around me so I think you know, from that was what I was like, okay, well, everyone's staring at me is probably thinking the same thing. So, but I've come to learn that that's not the case because any time somebody did say something to me, it was always something positive, you know? And how did you kind of deal with those, you know, negative comments that were coming at you? At first it was hard. And I did actually, like, I've had people tell me, you know, you should try using brow makeup. Have you go see a doctor? Um, have you thought about tattooing? Mm -hmm. Um, just comments that were not direct, but you get that sense of like, they don't like it. And I had had a few direct comments, but I don't know if I want to repeat those, um, because they come from loved ones, but, um, I did, kind of just listen to them and it did make me feel more insecure especially since they were from close people around me right um but then eventually I just put my foot down was like look I don't care what you think anymore like I love you but yeah I'm not going yeah just setting those boundaries I I can totally relate to that because you know I don't I don't really care too much doesn't bother me if someone online like says something to me about my my skin or my acne or even a stranger like on the street it doesn't really stick with me but I find the comments that hurt me the most were from the people close to me like my family and friends because you know like I don't think ever them suggesting different skincare products or you know different ways to treat my skin was ever like in in a bad way in their in their mind because they're like oh I'm just trying to help you right but for me I in the same way I had to like put my foot down and be like this unsolicited advice you're giving me like I don't want to hear it you know um I would have to tell my family like hey like if you notice I'm breaking out like don't mention it like because I already know right like I've looked in the mirror this morning you don't need to tell me hey like you're breaking out on your chin or whatever (laughs) like I don't need to um hear that because I already know it so yeah setting those boundaries I think especially with the people that you love and are close around you is definitely really important oh yeah I definitely agree because sometimes family have no filter (laughs) no (laughs) absolutely not but it's like I don't know if this is the kind of love I need right now I need that positive love (laughs) yes yes exactly yeah no I I totally agree with that um so tell me more about how obviously those couple videos on TikTok that you mentioned kind of blew up and gave you some traction, but what kind of inspired you to kind of take that audience you gained and kind of share how to just become more skin positive, become more self-loving and accepting of like your personal traits? So I get, I still do. I get a lot of comments and DMs from people who do have vitiligo, especially vitiligo like mine. And Mm -hmm. like, they'll tell me all the time that, you know, either they still hide it or that like seeing my content motivates them to not want to hide it. And that like Mm -hmm. that, that makes me so happy when I get a new message, just someone sharing their vitiligo and their story with me. And Mm -hmm. I'm just like, it makes me so happy because I remember back when I first developed vitiligo, the first place I went to was like Instagram, just trying to find other people who had vitiligo because I never knew vitiligo can affect your hair too. I only knew that it could affect your skin. Right. So I was searching up and down the internet for other people who have vitiligo like mine, and I couldn't find anybody really. It was harder to search back then, but I couldn't really find any information on it. Um. So now I feel like I want to be that positive light for those individuals, like have that information, have that positivity towards it, and just encourage them to you know, if they want to embrace it, embrace it. I completely understand, like, if they don't want to, because yeah. I understand how it feels. Um, but those messages and comments that I get from other individuals that were in my shoes, or I was in their shoes, mm-hmm. is what motivates me to keep going and post more just 
skin positivity content. That is so amazing. I, I love hearing that. And you obviously have become a role model for so many people. And I think you're using social media and your voice on social media in such a beautiful way to inspire people. And I think comments like that are really what like fuel, you know, your love to create content. And I can definitely relate to that because on some days where I'm like, you know, like, why am I doing this? Or you kind of get really wrapped up in maybe numbers or brand deals or, you know, the whole industry part of it. I read a DM that's like, you're the reason I didn't cover my acne at work today or something like that. And then I'm like this, you know, it reels me back in where I'm like, this is why I do this, you know? And um, it's amazing when you can kind of be that support for someone. Um, Does that ever kind of feel like a lot of pressure to you when like you know that some people are like relying on your content no not really I guess because I think back on like when I didn't have anybody Mm -hmm. to look through for that inspiration um I think that it it doesn't feel like a burden or anything like that right I never felt like it was like I think the brand deals and campaigns and that stuff is more. That's a different, (laughs) that's a different monster. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, No, and I think, you know, what you said right there, like it really created this feel in you because you didn't see anyone else like you on social media. And I think that's a struggle that so many of us can relate to because a lot of our insecurities or things that we're afraid to show the world are really stemmed from feeling like we're the only person out there that looks a certain way. And I remember for myself, I I started YouTube when I was 13 years old back in 2014. And at the time, it was like super like glam makeup, like, you know, all the beauty gurus on um, YouTube and stuff just all look perfect, perfectly clear skin, perfectly smooth makeup. And when I got into just making videos, like it was strange because I always felt like I was kind of doing my makeup wrong because I'm like, I don't look like these other people, right? Um, and then once I started just posting more and more content and showing my acne and stuff, like, I think the reason that my content did have some success is because people didn't have someone else that necessarily looked like them or was actually just showing that. And, um, it's crazy how so many of us can relate over an insecurity or the way we look, but it's just not posted, right? We just don't see that on our feed because we keep seeing like the same old beauty standard over and over and over that everyone's trying to achieve, right? Yeah, I completely agree. Like, I remember when I first started diving into, I I've, I almost went to school to do makeup. I've always been into makeup, mm-hmm. but then when I started like the social media thing, I'm just like, I don't think I'm that good at makeup because you see everyone online, they have the perfect flawless skin and probably using filters and stuff. Um, So that was a hard part for me was just getting on and recording myself to do my makeup because I was like, I feel like I'm not that good. Like I have four, like you see these videos and they don't have pores, they don't have wrinkles and wrinkles. And I'm just like, maybe I'm doing something wrong. (laughs) Like what, what is the answer? Like what is the secret ingredient that I don't have? Yeah, absolutely. The filters and editing and it's like, no, I need to be real, be myself and show. I do get a lot of comments that people appreciate that I don't hide, I guess, the texture that I do have Mm -hmm. and stuff. So that, that is motivating too. Right. And you mentioned that you've had your own like kind of journey with acne as well, especially um more into your adult life did you also struggle with acne as a teen um not so much I had like pimples here and there yeah start having problems until I got on birth control like that's kind of when it all started spiraling right so many problems for me (laughs) oh yes I I can relate to that definitely because my like latest like complete cystic breakout that I've never broken out that bad in my life before was it happened after I got off of birth control, which like completely messed me up. So I was like, yeah, like, birth control is such a, so- sorry. I was like, isn't birth control supposed to help us? I didn't, I started taking birth control because I did start breaking out and right. it just, it just made it all worse. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy how much your hormones can play an effect on that. Um, So how was that like kind of dealing with adult acne for you and going through that journey? I would say it was hard because I went from not really having any to just right. 
just all over, especially right here. Yeah. Like I do a lot of it was hormone related, mm-hmm. but um, and it was back when like I was trying like YouTube was big. And you have all those like proactive and the what's the St. Ives skin? The apricot scrub. scrub. And everything bad for your skin. Yeah. <laughs> just oh, like just literally the out. worst ways to yeah. just like burn your skin off. Yeah. Like I remember I saw a video on using toothpaste for your pimples and I did that all around here. Mm-hmm. And now I have permanent like redness that sits here. And I'm just like. Why couldn't we have TikTok back then? Yeah, with all the like actual useful skincare hacks. I I totally agree. I remember, I don't know if you remember the Aztec clay mask. That was like a big one on YouTube also. Oh the way I would use that like every single day, like every single day. And then I was like, my skin's so dry. Like, no kidding. Like, you're literally stripping your moisture barrier every day. And I was like, this will heal my skin forever. But I've learned yeah. so much about just skincare and my skin in general from TikTok and Mm -hmm. Instagram and like even YouTube now because it's a lot better yes yeah um I think if I had all those resources back then it probably would have been a lot easier Mm -hmm. than trying all those random I guess hacks or whatever probably um wasn't the best idea for my skin so it's like as soon as like my breakout would start to heal it just reappear mm-hmm. <laughs> just a never-ending cycle I think yeah. I posted one picture to social media back in like 2014 with no makeup on um just trying to like share some positivity but I don't have any pictures unless I have makeup on because right. I was so insecure about just having pimples and all that stuff Yeah, well, it wasn't as, like, normalized, I think, now, like, even now, like, it's still kind of a shock when you see someone kind of, like, being real online, but it's definitely a lot more common than than it was, and you're starting to see more, like, skin positivity and um, kind of just more unfiltered craters come and pop up here and there, which I I absolutely love, but... um, It's it's definitely shifting, and I still think there's a long way to go, but um, I did kind of with that I did kind of want to ask you like why how do I want to phrase this um in terms of kind of like the beauty standards that are constantly like pushed on social media you know um how do you stay strong-minded and like maintaining that skin positivity and do you feel like having a social media platform helps you with that um I definitely think having social media has helped a lot like I know there's the good and the bad that comes with social media Mm -hmm. um for me it's been more good I feel like it's helped me um just gain more confidence in myself like yes so much that I'm doing now that I never thought I would be doing like because I just didn't have that confidence I never thought I would be on the internet talking or just posting makeup free selfies or anything like that um one thing that helps is I do follow a lot of, like you, I follow a lot of um, beauty and skin positivity pages. So, you know, when I'm scrolling, that's, that's a lot what of you what see. I used to follow a lot of like um, beauty influencers. And then I just come to realize that, you know, some of them probably weren't doing me good mentally, mm-hmm. like health. So I did go through like an unfollow spree, like, mm-hmm. December because I was like I know they use filters and that's not really helping me with my self-esteem um so I think just seeing other people on my feed sharing um the same love for just having our natural skin and filter free self out there definitely helps me and keeps me motivated absolutely I actually in my second episode of this podcast I had a guest on um her name's Angelina she's also a Oh, like skin positivity creator and she talked a lot about how you have to kind of cleanse your social media and follow people that look like you and this is kind of what you're speaking to here now and I think um, like you said even though there are maybe people you followed that you know in the back of your mind that they probably use filters or um, you know maybe manipulate their their videos or photos to look a certain way 
even though you know that when you see it, you still compare yourself to that thing that's like maybe not even real, you know, and it's very hard to constantly like keep reminding yourself it's not real, it's not real, it's not real. So it's so much easier just to like find the people who look like you. Um, and it can definitely completely change, you know, how you view yourself when you're viewing all these other people on your page who maybe have certain aspects that you do because you can look at someone else and recognize their beauty a little easier than you can with yourself. And I think that seeing other people do that is is definitely um, very beneficial to, as you said, like your self-confidence and self-esteem. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think also it's giving more people the courage to also jump on their social media and show the them real selves and like, you know, take down the filter, maybe take off the makeup a bit and don't get me wrong. I love makeup. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to do, but it's also really great to just feel just as comfortable taking it off as you feel when you have a full face of makeup on. I think, you know, one of my favorite things is when I see people in my DMs that are like, Oh, like I want to actually start posting. Um, you know, similar content because you've inspired me to do that. And it's like, I love that because the more people we can get on social media, you know, taking down that boundary, like the better a place it'll be for all of us. I truly believe that. Yes, I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have any kind of, you know, you went through it, like kind of using your social media as a tool to become this almost role model for so many people. Um, do you have any like advice for someone who maybe is just using their social media to post their like highlight reel of their life? You know, do you have any advice for anyone who maybe wants to take that leap and kind of show more of them the real part of their life, but maybe is a little scared to do so? Um, I would have to say you just got to do it. You just gotta, just gotta do it. Like that was me. I was, mm -hmm. I was, I remember making the video and I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to post this. Yeah. Like, I just kind of like, the, like, do I delete or post it? Yeah. Like just, just post it. Like, yeah. don't, don't be afraid. There might be a few negative Nancy's out there, but they're there everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like there's going to be trolls, um, but you're going to have more influence and comments and just people then you are negative. Mm -hmm. So say, you just got to do it and you just got to get over that fear because I remember what that was like. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And did you feel like more of a fear of judgment from people like friends you had on social media or people you actually knew in real life rather than let's say like strangers or the trolls of social media? I would say yeah. And honestly, I still kind of feel some of that nowadays, but mm -hmm. then I'm just, I'm just like, why do I care? Like, I'm happy. I'm yes. doing what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, not doing anything wrong or bad. So, um, yeah, I would say definitely more towards people that I do know versus, I guess, I guess, because I know them. I don't yeah. Know. I don't yeah. It's, it's just that fear of fear of judgment. Um, and, and it's interesting because I, I used to have two like Instagram accounts, one that was like a personal account that was private and like I only followed people I knew like in real life. And then my, you know, public account that I was posting my skin positivity content on. And once I started taking Instagram, because I, I, I really didn't start posting content on social media. I mean, on Instagram, like in this space, um, the skin positivity space, what I was doing on TikTok and YouTube until like September of last year is when I started actually posting this type of content also onto Instagram. And I remember at that point I was kind of looking at my two accounts and I was like, okay, I'm using this personal social media with people that like I claim to know and I want to like keep up with their lives and everything. And everything I'm posting is a highlight reel. You know, every photo is like that perfect photo where I have like full glam makeup on or my skin, like I'm not breaking out, you know, it's like all just like this curated content and then here I am on my, you know, let's say like business page where I'm actually posting my actual content that I'm putting work into. And it's just like straight, like the photo I just took on my iPhone, like no editing, no filters, nothing. So I'm like, I was sitting there looking at that and I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, it was just this like moment of realization. And then I immediately deactivated my personal account and deleted it. And I remember getting quite a few texts that day from like people I knew, like being like, 
did you block me on Instagram or, you know, and I was like, no, I just like completely deleted my account. You know, I didn't even think twice about any of the photos on there, like to save them. Like I just deleted the whole thing. And then I started just posting only on the Instagram account that I have now. Um, Mm -hmm. And I knew that because of that, some people that knew me in my personal life would go follow me on this account now that it was my only Instagram. And it created this weird feeling because I had no problem showing my real skin to like complete strangers online um despite the hate comments or whatever but when it was like people I knew knowing like oh like Lavinia has acne or this and this it just like gives you that weird uncomfortable feeling but like you said at the end of the day like yeah you might get some negative comments or some judgment but the power that you can actually and the good that you can do by like just posting this content is so much more powerful you know and if people from high school want to judge me for doing my thing they can judge me you know they can um you know stalk my page and not follow or do whatever but I know that I'm doing good with my content and it's like you we already talked about those dms of people saying that we've inspired them that really fuel this all and at the end of the day um it's just such a fulfilling like job to almost have right it is it is very fulfilling um anytime I get a comment or just a message from somebody just sharing their story like I absolutely love it and I'm just like you guys keep coming because it makes me so happy like I try my best to respond to mm -hmm. any like dms that I unless they're just some creepy old man (laughs) yeah I would try my best to respond to everyone that I get um absolutely Yeah. And I think that too, like when you do respond, it almost makes people even more happy for reaching out to you and sharing their story, you know, because it shows that you care and you're, you know, you are a person behind this content. You're not just like um, posting this. Uh, You're actually there to connect with people. And I think, I think that really shows that social media has so much power and it's really up to us as people to know and to choose how we use it, you know, because I think social media can be used for so much bad. Um, But it's communities like these that we built that can be used for so much good. And I think the more people that kind of take that decision to start using their social media for good, um, will just make it so much better of a place. Because I know sometimes like scrolling on social media and then I like need to put my phone down and like knock on because it it can become like a really toxic place where um you're definitely comparing yourself to every person you you see on on an app oh yeah yeah I I definitely don't post as I have my personal Facebook account but I don't really share much of my like I don't share as much as I do on Instagram and TikTok Mm -hmm. my stuff that I do do because I feel like the people that I do know on there they're just like you know like side eyeing like <laughs> they're years old and you're like on. what are you doing yeah I had a few like comments that were just like but why you know and I'm like this is why I don't share to you guys because you guys don't understand no I feel like if people who are not like content creators or or ha- I guess have the knowledge of it mm-hmm. don't really understand the impact social media no. can have on just anybody like um I've had a few friends comment that like no I don't do social media because it's you know it's all bad and negative and I'm like I don't know what you guys are saying but mine's not yeah. <laughs> there are bad stuff on there but I don't Absolutely. go looking for it. yeah you have to just find like the communities that really fit with your values and you know obviously just like kind of stick to that and I think yeah like there is judgment there I've definitely gotten people in my life comment telling me things like oh why would you post your skin looking like that on social media for people to see you know um because they're almost afraid for me of the judgment but I'm like you know, someone's got to do it. Someone's got to show like this to help others, right? Like at the end of the day. And also at the end of the day, like it's just some acne. Like it's not this like terrible, terrible thing that you must hide from everyone, right? Like real life. Like, yeah, we should be sharing what is real and not trying to perceive this perfect, flawless lifestyle that absolutely a lot of put out. Yeah. And I think the misconception 
at least in my cases, like a lot of people assume that I'm trying to like glorify acne or, you know, like do all of this romanticize or whatever. And it's like, I'm not, it's like, obviously I'm working to like heal my skin and everything, but I can share that journey along the way, you know, yeah. and inspire other people to just feel, you know, not even, not even necessarily to feel happy or like love their skin, but to just feel okay in their skin and not feel like they need to like bash on themselves and hate themselves every time, every time they look in the mirror, you know, like that already is such a huge step from going from that, like hatred to just like feeling okay in your skin. And that's, that's the, that's the key part of it there. Cause it it's, takes so much effort, I think, to hide in this world. Like you mentioned how you would always leave, you know, you wouldn't leave the house without like a baseball cap or something on. You said that you kind of hid for like a year and a half you mentioned there. And I feel like that it takes energy to do that um, and constantly be worrying about that for, for that long. Yeah. I remember just breaking down crying just while doing my makeup because trying to cover a right brow and trying to make them look look similar yeah identical was not easy so I remember there was a few moments that I would just break down crying like just mad at the world um but I'm glad that I got over it because I'm Mm -hmm. so much happier and I'm that like that phase put me in like a very deep depressed state Mm -hmm. um and I'm so happy that like I'm out of that now. And I want others to have that too, like, and to f- feel that as well. Absolutely. And one thing I talk about a lot is like almost taking back control over the things you can't control. Um, because like, you know, in some cases, like I'm sure you felt this, like with little Lego, like you can't control it, you know, it's not something that um that you could have maybe done differently to not deal with or like me coming off birth control I had no idea that my face would completely break out like acne all over it just something that happened right and I think taking back that control of maybe putting the makeup down or you know just deciding to like go into the world and not hide like that's the little glimmer of control that you get to like actually choose um and I get your frustration I mean I feel like sometimes I can't even get my brows to look similar you know, and I feel like they look like sisters, not twins. So, like, I can't even imagine that frustration of, like, trying to color match them. But definitely I've had those times before work or school where I'm, like, have to wake up a little bit earlier to, like, I felt like I had to wake up to put on makeup to cover my acne, you know. And I was like, oh, like, I wish I could just, like, you know, not do this and go into the world and not have to cover my skin. Only if I had clear skin, blah, blah, blah. But it's, like, what's stopping me from just doing that anyways? You know, like I don't have to put on this makeup to leave the house. I can just leave the house. Right. And once you kind of realize that and make that switch, like it, it takes like such a load off your shoulders. And as you said, like, you just feel so much happier and even more comfortable in your skin, which is like kind of ironic because you're just kind of like letting that insecurity shine to the world. But um, that is really the first step I think to, a self-love and you know more positive journey is just like taking that veil down like almost forcing yourself into it Mm -hmm. yeah I never thought I would be as confident and comfortable I am in my 30s um compared to like my 20s like Mm -hmm. I wish I lived through most of my 20s just not having that confidence because I feel like I could have done so much more you know I'm only getting older but you know 30s is not old but whatever (laughs) um but yeah I I never thought I'd be like this happy and confident at the age that I'm at now compared to like I feel like any 22 year old should be like happy and confident and like living their best life Mm -hmm. and um I would try but I would also be stressed about trying to put on makeup and have that perfect flawless skin that you see on the ads and tv absolutely and I actually was thinking a lot about this the other day because that age filter is like really popping on tiktok now and everyone's like freaking out when they see themselves age and like I have to get a skincare routine like I hate how I look like this is you know like and now we're comparing like our older versions of ourselves and we're like why does this person look better than me like you know all this like silly stuff and I was really thinking about it and I was like wow like in this moment is the youngest we will ever be you know in our whole lives this like right now is the youngest we will be going forward and it's like if you are looking at yourself with that age filter on and you just like hate what you see 
then like when are you when are you gonna start loving yourself right like if you can't do that now so it's like I think the the earlier you start the better and obviously it just grows and grows but I also think it's never too late to start that like self-love journey and um try to work on that because it, it it's such a powerful thing and it never I think one misconception too and let me know if you've kind of had a similar experience a lot of people think that it's like almost like a switch that you just decide like to like love yourself and be confident and then all of a sudden like you're just 100 confident all the time and um I think that's a huge misconception because as much as I like reap skin positivity there's still days where I like want to cover up my skin or I feel insecure you know and um, have you had like experience like that as well? Oh yeah. There's times that I look at myself in the mirror and I'm just like, I don't like this side at all, <laughs> but then I had to like, just, I guess. Um, trip. Yeah. Absolutely. Now that I'm in my thirties, I'm going through that phase of like spotting new wrinkles and fine lines and, you know, my pores are more defined and, you know, it gets harder as you get older mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, so right now I'm dealing with that. Like I'm trying to be positive about it, but it is getting harder. And I'm just like, I just got over like, you know, like pimples and yeah. pimples. I go, and now I see a new wrinkle and it's like, I'm trying. I'm yeah. Trying. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, you know, you have your good and you have your bad days. Um, yeah. and it's yeah. an ongoing journey. It's not just like, you know a one-time switch and then everything's all great like you have to as you said like almost trick yourself and continue to work on it every single day and just um for the most part like keep a a positive mindset and like kind of reel yourself back in when things start to get negative I was gonna say I think one thing that does help me a lot is like when I do start feeling that way I just take a like selfie and then I'll just share it online like I feel like that's yes I'm just pushing myself out of that negative state I feel like that helps helps absolutely I literally Um, cannot relate to something more because I swear like on my worst acne days the first thing I do is like film a tiktok and show how my skin was looking and post it and like for some reason that made me feel so much better like sharing it with the world you know um but yeah that's a great a great trick for anyone listening that maybe is kind of going over some of those hurdles just like like you mentioned before just post it you know and it will for the most part probably make you feel a lot better um Victoria before we like finish this off I did kind of want to jump into one last topic here so obviously you are a mom how how do you think that has changed your perspective on like beauty standards like having a kid and like you know what do you hope to kind of teach them so that they maybe don't compare themselves as much to other people especially with the rise of social media probably getting bigger and bigger every year um I th- for me, I think having a daughter is kind of what just set in stone for me that I need to just um, be more, I guess, positive, especially around them. Like, right. cause, you know, we'll sit there and talk down on ourselves out loud and we don't realize our kids are right there listening. And that's where they learn a lot of it from. Right. Well, I try really hard not to do that in front of the kids and stuff. My husband's the same way. Um, like they have never questioned my vitiligo. Like I, they just see it and they think it's normal. Now mm-hmm. when they see pictures of me without my vitiligo, they're just like, "What? What happened?" Like, <laughs> yeah, I wake up and I cover, and they're just like, "You look weird." Yeah, oh, so used to it. And I, you know, I try to do my best to explain to them that like everyone is going to look different. They're going to have different features. I've explained what vitiligo is to them. Um, Like my daughter, I know she's only two years old. She absolutely loves makeup. I guess she gets that from me. Mm-hmm. I feel like she loves makeup more than I do. I <laughs> she's a very girly girl, which is weird because I've done all the same things in front of my boys and they show no interest at all. <laughs> um, But I feel like just showing her that it's okay to just play and have fun in makeup um will help too uh I feel like there's this like little stigma that little girls shouldn't be playing with makeup or but it's like it's there to have fun and like embrace like what you do have yeah um I think just reminding my kids that 
we are all different and we all have different features is um, like how I'll continue to approach it. And I think, of course, them seeing me will help them see that too. Mm -hmm. Because I think I I have noticed that I think he's almost eight years old. I think he's starting to be more a little conscious of himself I've noticed lately. And I have to constantly remind him like, you know, don't nitpick anything about yourself. Right. Right. We're all meant to be different and it's okay to be different. So. Absolutely. And I think you kind of making that conscious decision that like, obviously you're such a role model online, but like you almost have to like put up your best front because that's what your kids will see. I think that's so important, but um, because obviously kids are so impressionable and it's so interesting. I, I kind of thought about this, this moment when you were talking about like your son becoming a little more conscious of himself. And I think when we're, kids like super young kids I think that's when we're at like our peak confidence you know because we don't care about other people are thinking about us we're just doing our thing you know we're just living in our own world and definitely as we grow like we start to kind of realize more people may be looking and judging and then I think as we get older in life it kind of starts to kind of you know go on the other end where we're like I don't really care what other people think I just want to be happy and I just want to live my life so you kind of like do like a full circle yeah exactly exactly um no and I I think that's awesome and uh it makes me smile to hear your daughter loves makeup I know I loved makeup when I was younger and um my mom never really put like a restriction around it like I didn't wear it a lot when I was little I would just like play around with it with her makeup um and then I got really into beauty when I was like 13 which you know I would say is still pretty young but I I was just having fun with it. And I think at the end of the day, like that is really the fun of makeup is that you can just be creative and wash it off at the end of the day. You know, like you're not really fully changing anything about yourself, but you can use it just to kind of make yourself feel good, which is, which is awesome. But no, that's, that's great to hear how you're kind of, you know, using that, that influence you have also on your kids. And I think um, that'll definitely serve them really good as they get older and start to, to feel that, that pressure of like, I don't know, society expectations and beauty standards and all of that. Yeah, I get a lot of kids that will just come up to me in public and just ask me just all the questions. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I don't know how to explain vitiligo to you guys. (laughs) And then when I do explain it, they're just like, I'm just like, I'm I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've, I, I think I've had one moment like that with a little kid with like when my acne was like literally all over my face. Cause I think they just had never seen that before. So they were like, what is on your face? You know? And like that obviously like their kid, like they don't, they don't know. I obviously didn't get hurt by that at all, but it kind of just made me laugh. Cause <laughs> it was like, yeah, like I know my skin is just completely acne at, at that point in time. It's just, it was just yeah. kind of silly. There's a few times I've tried to, I had to explain what pimples are to my boys and like yeah. everyone, like when I do have a breakout, my daughter will be like, oh, mommy, you got out cheek. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> they can boy. really hurt sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's really cute. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's so cute. Well, Victoria, I think, um, I think that kind of brings us to to the end of the podcast. Thank you so much for coming on Loud Talk and and sharing your journey with social media. I think that is really inspiring to hear how you kind of, you know, use it as such a tool to not only inspire yourself and become more self-positive, but also inspire so many others. And I, I hope you keep doing it for a long time because I'm sure you bring a smile to a lot of people's faces. Thank you. And I hope you do too, because I absolutely love seeing, I'm, I think I started seeing your content on TikTok. Okay. And it's slowly trickled into my Instagrams when I started seeing you too. And I was like, yeah. I love so much. Like, I think Thank you were the you. star of me following more skin positivity positivity accounts so now all I see is like skin positivity and it helps it helps me and I'm sure many others so much thank you um, well I, I love to hear that and you know I love that this community is growing bigger and bigger so yeah that is that is so lovely to hear thank you Well, yeah, that is it for this episode, everyone. If you um, did enjoy, make sure to give it a five-star rating on Apple and Spotify and a big thumbs up on YouTube. I'll also have all of Victoria's um, social media um, 
all down below in the description of this episode. So make sure to go follow her because she posts some amazing content and I'm sure you'll absolutely love it. Um, Victoria, again, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, It was so lovely speaking to you and not just seeing your face on social media, but I'll continue supporting, of course. But um, yeah, to everyone listening, remember to tell yourself something you love about your skin today and just remember to be loud in this crazy world because it's all you can do. (laughs) All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.